is echoing through the Saturday night here in Starkville, Mississippi. A uniquely indigenous sound of football in the South. Welcome everyone to the SEC on ESPN. From Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville, Mississippi, the first conference road test for the number eight Auburn Tigers taking on the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Folks, the key word tonight, defense, and we have lots of it. The four top defenders in the country on the field, Dusty. Well, Jonesy, we got some defensive dudes tonight in Starkville. It starts for Auburn. Garrett Brown, a freakish combination, size, speed, athleticism. He's 6'5", he's 325, one of the most disruptive forces in all of college football. And you like, you like defensive line play? How about Jeffrey Simmons? Powerful, explosive, very disruptive inside, a one-gap player that sheds blocks well and really is a dominant force on the inside of this Mississippi State defensive line. And on the outside flanking him, we got a long, lean, dynamic pass rusher in Montez Sweat. He's 6'6", he's 245. I told you, he reminds me a lot of Mr. Jason Taylor. That type of potential got to, has a really nice pass rush with a long arm. But it's not just up front for Mississippi State, also on the back end. How about Jonathan Abram? This guy is tenacious, flies around the football field, kind of that old school, nasty mentality. And he is a physical tackler at the point of attack. If you like defense, <laughs> tune in tonight. It's about to go down. My partner's amped. I'm thinking about 1714. This is the 10 year anniversary, folks, of the famous 3 2 game. Some of the locals here remember it even if they choose not to really remember it, if you know what I mean. Listen. I know you like points. <laughs> May not be a lot of points tonight. West Byron gonna attempt this field goal from 35 yards out. And this one is good. Puts the first points on the board tonight. Todd passing out of his end zone. Flag down. Holding number 50. Two. That's right. It was ugly, but uh, you know we'll take three to two every time we play this year. Ten years later, fans of Auburn and Mississippi State are hoping to avoid a case of deja vu, but both of these teams' offenses are struggling mightily. Auburn's quarterback, Jarrett Stidham, admitted to me that their offensive line is beat up. They're dealing with some injuries, and that's put more pressure on him to elevate his game. Today, he'll focus on getting the ball out quickly, some short to intermediate passes, and some more designed quarterback runs. And for Mississippi State, Nick Fitzgerald hasn't thrown a touchdown pass since September 15th, but Joe Moorhead standing by his starter, stressing that they won't turn to backup Keaton Thompson just yet. Instead, he'll simplify the game plan, hoping for more confidence and quick decisions. He said Fitzgerald's issues have been mental, not physical. They need to get his confidence up early, Mark. Yeah, Molly, he holds 12 different school passing records. Joe Moorhead, the man on the sidelines in his first year, an offensive guru, much like Gus Malzahn, who likes to hang his hat on offense. His team's running game looking to get untracked here after a couple of consecutive sub 100 yard rushing games for the Auburn Tigers. Mississippi State won the toss, deferring to the second half. Auburn will receive. The sounds of football in the South. The Tigers do have a kickoff return for touchdown this year. But Igbenogany will not get an opportunity to be first and 10 Tigers from the 25 yard line. Mark Jones, Dusty Dvorak, my partner. You're talking about rip moves today and swim moves ooh, and all ooh. that stuff. We're right? going to teach some stuff today. We got some quality <laughs> defensive linemen on display here tonight. Dusty, both these teams are thinking about history in terms of getting their games back on track, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, last year, Mississippi State, they lost two games in a row, and they looked to last season as a building point where they lost those two games. They really hit their stride. They want to do the same thing here. And for Auburn, they're one point away from being undefeated. So though there's some shakiness on the offense, that defense has been so good, they're right there, not just the conference race, but the national championship race as well. First down and 10. Stidham rolling out to his right. Completes his first attempt to the 29 yard line. No, now they're going to say incomplete. 
intended for Ryan Davis, the team's leading receiver. Let's take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A yeah. impact players. We won't see them till Mississippi State gets the ball, but Jenkins, the center, as well as Deshaun Davis, the linebacker, two outstanding players. Jenkins might be the best center in all of college football, and Deshaun Davis, man, does he make plays for this Auburn defense. Auburn's offensive line a little bit banged up last week in their win against Southern Miss. Little counter run here. That's Cam Martin. It'll be interesting to see how much we see of the backup, Booby Whitlow, who was nicked up last week. A three yard gain by Cam Martin. And it's third down and about seven to go. This is a bad area for Auburn. We talked with Gus Malzahn. He said, We've got to stay out of third and seven plus. And when you're talking about Bob Shoup and this Mississippi State defense, they love to dial up pressure in situations just like this. Whitlow watching from the sidelines on third and long. Stidham has time, rolls out. And he's going to be forced out of bounds at about the 32-yard line, short of the first down. Fourth down coming up. Well, Mark, Auburn's Booby Whitlow ran out onto the field in warm-up, screaming, flexing, beating his chest. He's excited and ready to compete. You can see he's chomping at the bit to get out there. He moved well in warm-ups. He did extra ball security drills with his left arm. I never saw him favoring that side, guys. We'll see if he goes in. Yeah, he's one of the more productive players. Jersey's still clean here after the first series. Aaron Sippos with the punt. Keith Mixon at his own 21-yard line feels it with a fair catch. It'll be first and 10 for the Bulldogs from there. Nick Fitzgerald taking the reins of the offense after that 48-yard punt and nothing on the return. Fitzgerald with 12 different school records and approaching the top spot in terms of rushing quarterbacks in the SEC. Tim Tebow holding down that number one spot for now. They want to simplify the game plan, give Nick Fitzgerald easier reads, simple decisions, less to think about, allow him just to go out and play and play at a high level. And a nice run by Fitzgerald between the tackles to the 33. Picks up five. Well, Mark, Joe Moorhead said that he can see some of the mental effects of that injury on his quarterback, Nick Fitzgerald. He said he used to be able to put his foot in the grass and just barrel through people when he ran with the football. He sees a lot more hesitation now. He said that his issues in the run game are 100% mental. They're not physical. He needs to get over that hurdle. A good time to break out here tonight. Going to run it again, Molly. And stoned by Darrell Williams, one of the first guys to get there for that Auburn defense. His forward progress is going to give him about three yards, though. Interesting that Fitzgerald said in the wake of his injury, I asked him about calls of support from other former players or people who have had this injury. He said Gordon Hayward of the Boston Celtics was one of the athletes that reached out to him and offered some very encouraging words. He, nice didn't, to know see. If, he didn't know if he'd ever play football again. Yeah. He thought his career was over. And here he is trying to put together a solid senior season. Third and two. There's Williams up the middle. Got the first down out to the 43-yard line. Dusty, that's kind of how it's going to have to be tonight, right? Well, this is <laughs> offense is built and predicated on a physical running attack. And getting Eris Williams a football is a necessity. Good blocking in the middle, a good tough physical run. I think both Kylan here, Eris Williams, both have to be bigger pieces of this offense starting tonight. An offensive line for the Bulldogs winning on that series, on that play. Williams sets in the backfield. It's Gerald going up top here and good coverage at the 30 yard line incomplete. It was Christian Tut. And he was working against Austin Williams. And we're seeing some slight subtleties to this offense. Joe Moore had told us they wanted to have some different formations, some motion, some shift. We've seen Kylan Hill in the slot motion back into the backfield. Now back to back plays. Eris Williams starts in the slot and then motions back to the backfield. Just doing a little bit of things to try to make this Auburn defense think and slow him down just a step. Second and ten. Getting to Kalen Hill, Kylan Hill, who's back in the ball game with nine and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. This week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Capital One. And uh, one of the big stories of the day, boy, look at that L. Florida defeating LSU in Oklahoma, Texas. 
Dusty, you're still with me, man. I'm, I'm feeling you a little bit. Yeah, Oklahoma, we're talking about defense here. There wasn't a whole lot of defense no. being played at the Cotton Bowl today, especially from the Oklahoma Sooners. But congrats to Tom Herman. Nice win for the long ones. But Tyler Murray had his Heisman moment there in the dying moments of that game. But Texas rallied back to win. Third and seven for Mississippi State. Fitzgerald got rid of it. Picked off at midfield. Jeremiah Dinson, one of the leaders on defense. Boy, it looked like that hit him right between the two and the zero. It was intended for Osiris Mitchell. That's the second interception of the year for Dinson, number 20. And Dinson just does an excellent job reading the quarterback's eyes. He's going to have eyes on the quarterback the entire time. He gets to his spot right in the throwing lane for Nick Fitzgerald. Outstanding job being in the proper position and making a play on the football. Let's see if Auburn takes a shot here after the interception. Cox in motion now sets. They choose to run it instead. That's Martin, and he is met in the middle by Simmons, number 94, and Errol Thompson. No gain on the play. Errol Thompson, somewhat overshadowed by Simmons and Sweat. Well, big Jeffrey Simmons in the middle, man. He is such a tough character to deal with. You'll see him inside, just working on the new center. Nick Brahms fights through a double team, stays in his gap. Picture perfect from a nose tackle. Second and 10, Stidham on the out, completes it. And this is going to be close to a first down. Tucker Brown making the reception. The former walk-on picks up nine on the play. It'll be third down and one. They're up at the line of scrimmage going quick. He's almost like an extra offensive lineman at 290 pounds. Handoff. Great straight on by Martin. And that's going to be pretty close. Let's see where they spot this. Field goal unit comes in. Little surprised we're not seeing Auburn go for it here. I think that that speaks to the lack of physicality up front of their offensive line, especially that they're going against such a physical defensive front for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Anders Carlson going to attempt this field goal from about 46 yards out. He's only 6 of 12 on the season, but he's attempted an inordinate amount of 50 yarders. This one is right between the pipes by Carlson. And just like that famous 3-2 game 10 years ago, we got the three, Dusty. <laughs> Waiting for the safety now. <laughs> Seven and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Tigers with the lead when we come back. Gerald going to take off, looking explosive and fast and dynamic on that run. Fitzgerald bruising his way out to the 45 before being tackled by Thomas, but he picked up eight. He is a physical runner. He's a big guy. We sat down with him yesterday. He's ever been a 6'5", 235. And if you want to arm tackle Nick Fitzgerald, you better think again. He's going to run through arm tackles left and right. Nice pickup on first down. They're going to run it again here. Good hole over the left side. And this is Williams. Running the ball well on successive plays now, a 12-yard pickup. Big holes in the interior of that Mississippi State offensive line and good patience. And then a burst through the hole by Eris Williams. Out of the 43. They run the ball like this, watch them to take their shots with the defense on their heels. Four receivers out to the top of your screen. Fitzgerald keeps it. Nice moves between the tackles. Still on his feet. And just trips up. Barely trips up. And a first down for Fitzgerald. Got a great block from Island. And a 29-yard pickup. Excellent job reading the defense. The defensive end goes 
with Eris Williams. Nick Fitzgerald takes it between the tackles. Nice read and run for the senior quarterback. This is as fast as we've seen him this year. Yes, Dusty. A little explosiveness right there. Down to the 14. Hands it off and nowhere to go this time for Eris Williams. Tried to run it into the boundary, but Nick Coe, one of those guys that is frequently overlooked because of Russell and Brown and Davidson up front. Coe making the play that time. Tried to run the counter. Nick Coe, as you mentioned, very physical at the point of attack, set a hard edge. Made a nice play behind the line of scrimmage. He was named the SEC Defensive Player of the Week after that week one win against Washington. Big time wrestler back in high school. Uses that leverage and. Those guys always make good defensive line. Absolutely. Right? Leverage and hand placement. Stuart Reese split out wide and Fitzgerald tried to run it himself. Nothing doing that time up the middle. That time it was Davidson making the tackle. And in a blink, it's third down coming up and long for Mississippi State. A loss of one on the play. Back to back negative plays, both made by the front for this Auburn defense. Marlon Davidson, Nick Coe, Dontavious Russell, Derek Brown. I mean, they're just loaded up front. This is where Fitzgerald has been trying to develop chemistry with his receivers. Need some big plays. Mitchell split wide to the top of your screen. He's their leading wideout. They're going to run it again. Williams. Put his hat down, but he was pushed out of bounds. Short of the first down at about the eight-yard line. Sets up a fourth and about five to go. He picked up eight. We've seen a good mix of runs between the tackles as well as quite a few perimeter runs. And it looks like Joe Moorhead. Wow, is he going to go for it here? Keeping the offense on the field. He's got to kick this. Yeah. I really do. When you think about... Points being at a premium, right. <laughs> you can't have this successful drive that you put together and come away with nothing. I think it's the right choice to try to take the points. Brother, you said it. Points at a premium Man. tonight. Jace Chrisman in. Three of five on the season. This one from 25 yards out. And he knocks the game at three apiece. We've already scored one more point than we did in this game 10 years ago. Yeah, that's a reason to ring that bell. Nice and loud for the people in the back. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back, everyone, under the lights at Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville, Mississippi. A part of the country where football is just weaved into the very fabric of everyday life, 24-7. You're seeing and feeling that vibe right now. Place is lit, partner. Oh. <laughs> we got a good seat, too. Yeah, we do. Auburn has a kickoff return for a touchdown this year. This is Martin. And Martin out to the 26. Let's go back to the studio and Chris Cotter. Stidham to pass, completes it. Out to the 42-yard line, Darius Slayton with his 14th reception of the season. Picked up 15 yards and a first down. Good protection, Max Pro. They leave seven in the block. Good clean pocket. A nice pass delivered by Jared Stidham. And a passing again, complete again to Slayton. Stepped out of bounds, got about seven. A couple of big plays on that last drive. And this is going to be their wide sweep. We're going to see Aris Williams come back into the into the backfield. Good down block by Greg Island. Deion Calhoun's going to pull around. An excellent cut up the field by Nick Fitzgerald. Speaking of cuts, nice cut on that play by Booby Whitlow. Whitlow was somewhat questionable as to whether he would play, but he picked up 10 on that one. You watch the tape. Talk about a physical downhill runner. I think the best of the bunch this Auburn running back for. Little receiver screen out of the edge. That's Davis. Ryan Davis, their leading receiver. 
picked up about three. Yeah, Whitlow was injured in that game against Southern Miss. Hurt his shoulder, as Molly reported a little bit earlier here tonight. A fast-moving game, under one and a half to go in the first quarter. Whitlow again got a blocker in front of him. That makes it out to the 37-yard line. Picked up four on the play. Now they're in third and manageable, right? They're not behind the chains. Now the entire playbook's opened up. Run games available, play action pass. Like to play action and throw. Ten years ago, it was three to two. There's a look at the quote unquote superlatives. Some of the highlights. 15 of 18 baseball games played that day were higher scoring than 3-2. We'll be right back, folks. We got fireworks. Welcome back, everyone, to the SEC on ESPN. The sideline is hyped for Mississippi State. A couple of get-back coaches being kept busy. Direct snap to the running back. That's what they do. A little lock out of fumble by Martin, and they're not going to make it. A miscue, a costly one. And Mississippi State, fortunate that time, Mark McLaurin with the tackle and remember they switched centers two games ago the third start for Nick Brahms they wanted more physicality and a week ago they had four false starts and now a faulty snap to the running back Cam Martin results in a big loss on a crucial third and short situation big mistake and now this field goal by Carlson is going to come from well, right around 50 yards they're going to say it's 49 Made his first one from 47 tonight. And he's going to push this one left. So it looked like a promising drive. 11 plays in. Turned the other way on the Tigers. Sidham had his hat ripped off. And Gus Malls on wondering just what happened. Back here in Starkville, and there's a lot of energy here on Mississippi State sidelines. The coaching staff telling the running backs, when you get to the edge, you need to increase your speed. I need a little more physicality out of you. And another good sign, Nick Fitzgerald going up to his offensive line, telling them, keep doing your thing. I got you. You see a lot of confidence in him, especially in the run game now, guys. Now, Molly, his leadership has really grown over the last couple of years. Hands it off to Kylan Hill right there. Go back to the play on third and short. Cam Martin in a quarterback with a wildcat. You see that snap wide left. Running back not typically used to taking a shotgun snap. Again, that speaks to a young, inexperienced center starting for just his third time and Nick Brahms. Part of that uh, shift on the offensive line for the Tigers. Fitzgerald pulls it out. He's going to go over the middle. Got his man at the 40-yard line. That's Osiris Mitchell. The guy they're trying to work on in terms of improving his confidence. A little redemption for him on the 23-yard game. When you can get the physical ground game going, it opens up things in the back end. Nice route on the dig by Osiris Mitchell and a perfect pass on time and on target from Nick Fitzgerald. Goes down in 10. it off the hill nice move to get those shoulders north south a missed tackle by Daryl Williams tried to collar hill and couldn't a 10 yard game well it's a foot race on the edge 49 Daryl Williams going to try to beat Kylan Hill to the perimeter but too much speed a little stutter step by Kylan Hill a nice pickup on first down we've seen an excellent mix of inside the tackle running and a lot of wide what I would call a running back sweep getting these running backs to the perimeter. It's Gerald hands it off the hill again. Hill down to the 29 yard line. Christian Tut making the stop on the two yard gain. Going back to last year. Then coach Dan Mullen told the starting quarterback Fitzgerald, hey, listen, you've got to get into the locker room and make relationships and make friends with new guys in the locker room so they see you as 
an even more important leader on this team. And he has successfully continued to do that. Second down and eight. With a blitz coming. Picked up Fitzgerald. Incomplete. Over the middle. Damian Sherwood defending on the play against Green. You know what? We haven't said much about Derrick Brown so far, Dustin. And I think part of that is why you've seen so many perimeter runs, right? What's the what's the one way to stay away from Derrick from Brown? Yeah. Get the ball to the edge, get the ball to the perimeter. I think that's part of the game plan that we've seen to this point. RPO on that last play has an excellent job by the true freshman safety, Jamie and Sherwood, not coming downhill, taking the fake on the run, staying up and making a nice play for the pass breakup. Third down and eight. Derek Brown, the guy we talked about in the open. Maybe the most highest rated player on the field here tonight. Fitzgerald almost picked off over the middle. Daniel Thomas got a jump on that route and almost had himself a pick. It was intended for Farad Green. Fourth and eight coming up. Nick Fitzgerald, lucky. Almost had his second interception of the afternoon. Excellent job in coverage by 24 Daniel Thomas reads the quarterback's eyes makes a break on the football Woo. close very He's having a nice interception Jace Chrisman on the field now attempting a field goal from 47 yards out this would be a career long made one earlier from 25 sometimes football is a game of inches it caroms off the upright and through I didn't hear him call bank, Dusty. But you know what? He'll take that anyway. Well, Bully won Mississippi State's first ever Bulldog mascot served in the 1960s. He's now buried, get this, under the 50-yard line at Davis Wade Stadium right here beneath the players' bench. One of the more uh, lovable live mascots we see in college football. Latavius Whitlow in the backfield, a.k.a. Booby. And he's going to get a chance here. Got uphill and downhill. And a nice gain by Whitlow. Got a great block by Harrell. Yeah, Harrell is going to pull out. He's going to get outside. Excellent job leading the way for Whitlow. Mm. Ooh, nice block. Toss into the boundary. Whitlow again. Across the 40 to the 42 yard line. Whitlow, six feet. Of Lafayette, Alabama. The team's leading rusher coming into the game tonight, averaging over 5.3 per carry. Get him gets rid of it quickly, complete. That's Davis. And Davis going to be stopped out about a yard short. Third and short, a manageable down and distance for Gus Malzahn. Adams with the tackle. Ryan Davis kind of the spark plug for this offense. They love to get him the football out in space. Nice pickup on second down. Another third and manageable for this Auburn offense. Stidham has made his last six in a row. Wildcat coming up. Whitlow, counter yeah. power. Got Whitlow taking the direct snap here. Trick play, Stidham going to throw it downfield, wide open, wide open, and he missed him. He overshot Slayton. Oh, wow. Well, they dial up a perfect play, and they don't execute. I mean, they had Mississippi State fooled nobody, and I mean nobody stays with Darius Slayton. Unbelievable. And thrown way over the head of Slayton. Jared Stidham, he had to get rid of the football quick. He was under duress. But man, you got to find a way to complete that pass. Not going to get many opportunities mm. against this Mississippi State defense like that. Zipas with the punt. Nixon back there at the six-yard line. 
And an opportunity fallen by the wayside. Back here in Starkville, Mississippi State up 6-3. And at kickoff, the death zone meter I had on my phone read at 100 decibels. That creates hearing uh, damage if you're exposed for too long. And what do we want here, Brad? Taco Bell is honoring student sections like these. And Mississippi State is on their watch list. Make sure to go to ESPN.com. Taco Bell to find out more. I don't know if Taco Bell's gonna find louder fans, Molly, than those cowbell armed fans. Pass complete to Green, and Green gets a first down out by the 20 yard line. Farad Green playing H back. He's a is a split zone action. He's just gonna sneak out into the flats. Easy dump down for Nick Fitzgerald in the first down. Hands it off here to Hill, nowhere to go. That's going to be a loss of about one on the plate. Davis making the tackle. I started to talk about Fitzgerald, turned on his phone, had gotten a text from his new head coach, Moorhead, who said, make sure you get your ring size because we're going to win an SEC championship and we're going to have a big season. And he also told Fitzgerald, clear a spot on that mantelpiece of yours at home for a potential Heisman Trophy. And Fitzgerald said, I love the fact that coach was so hyped and I liked his swag when he talked so brazenly like that you gotta have confidence right yep. coach had confidence I don't think the national championship for the Heisman's actually gonna happen but you gotta love the confidence <laughs> and the buy-in from the quarterback Nick Fitzgerald sometimes you gotta speak it into existence incomplete Gidry dropped it no other way to say it and that's been one of the things with this Mississippi State, State passing attack so far this season. It's been a calamity of errors, right? We've seen drop passes. There's Stephen Gidry on a shallow crosser. He's got to make that catch when he hits it in his hands. There's been drops. There's been lack of protecting Nick Fitzgerald, as well as Nick Fitzgerald's had some accuracy issues. So pretty much every facet of this passing attack has had has had its flaws so far early in this season. Yeah, there's Mitchell. He had a drop on a post last week. That would have made the score 13 to 3 against Florida at the time. This time it's Austin Williams making the catch, no gain on the play. And it's fourth down coming up for the Bulldogs. In this low scoring affair. Third and long, they play conservative. They've already seen one interception for Nick Fitzgerald. He almost threw a second, so he just threw a screen outside. Excellent pursuit to the football by that Auburn defense. That's Ryan Davis for Auburn, back standing on his own 23-yard line. Auburn does have one punt return for a touchdown this year. That was returned by Christian Tutt. Tucker Day with the punt. They hit an Auburn player. It's live. Late whistle, and Mississippi State may have recovered it. It's Bulldog football. Baldwin, the long snapper, makes the recovery. So an error in special teams for the Tigers is costly here. Ryan Davis gets knocked out of the way by his own man, and he tries to get on the football. Collision, he's looking for it. It's right there underneath him. How about Baldwin, the deep snapper, hustling down the field, Johnny on the spot. Huge, huge turnover for Mississippi State. <laughs> First of the season, and boy, did it come in the nick of time. No doubt. Man. Hill in motion. Fitzgerald keeps it, broke a couple of tackles. Fitzgerald with a first down at the 21 yard line. A 13 yard gain. And a missed tackle by Daryl Williams on the play. Well, I mentioned earlier, you better wrap up Nick Fitzgerald. Arm tackles aren't going to do it. You got to give him a shoulder and you got to give a hard wrap as he runs through the arm tackle without a shoe. He left Williams with one of his Adidas. <laughs> Tylen Hill in the backfield. Hill on the handoff right up the middle. Tackled by Nick Coe, a three-yard pickup. Nick Fitzgerald, by far having his most success the last couple of games, running the football. 
looks like he's just got a little bit more of a burst, and he's making more concise decisions. Been very productive in this half. Run it 10 times for 76 yards. He's the second leading rusher on the team coming into the game tonight. Hill on the handoff, trying to get to the edge. Great second effort and got up near the first down marker. His hat came off at about the 11 yard line. Great effort though. You saw the emotion from Kylan Hill. As he gets to the perimeter, lowers his shoulder on the big Jamel Dean. Elma gets knocked off out of bounds. Excellent extra effort by Kylan Hill. Third and one. They're going to mark him short, third and short. Fitzgerald's going to keep it. Gets the first down, no question. First and goal, Bulldogs. You don't need technology to tell you that's enough for the first down. Picked up seven. Nick Fitzgerald has put his stamp on this first half, as has the Mississippi State offensive line. Getting physical, going to pull the guard around. Easy pickup on third and short. And Derek Brown on first and goal on the sidelines for the Auburn Tigers. The top defensive lineman. Projected first round NFL pick. Fitzgerald changes his mind and throws it. What a great decision. Williams made a catch at the last second and made it to the one before Williams made a tackle. They put Darrell Williams in a tough spot, right? Darrell Williams had to make a choice. Am I going to play the quarterback? Am I going to play Eris Williams out in the flat? Run pass option. A nice decision by Nick Fitzgerald as he drops three-quarter wow. and gets it to his running back. Came a little sidearm, didn't mm -hmm. he? One and a half to go in the first half. Second and goal, Fitzgerald keeping it short of the end zone. Russell making the tackle here at Davis Wade Stadium, Starkville, Mississippi. The number eight team in the country, the Auburn Tigers, trailing six to three under the lights here in Starkville, Mississippi. I'm Mark Jones alongside Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath down to the field. And this is the first conference road opener for the Auburn Tigers and Gus Malzahn's offense, which continues to look for its rhythm. Right now, his defense on the field. Third and goal, Mississippi State. Fitzgerald keeps it. He got in. Touchdown. Tackle from behind by Davidson. And the momentum took him forward. What do you do here on fourth down? Do you go for it or not if you're Mississippi State? After review, the runner's elbow was down with the ball at the one half yard line. It'll be fourth down. Do you take the points with the field goal or do you go for it? You are just literally inches away. I'm going for it. Okay. At home, fourth and goal, fourth and inches for Mississippi State with four seconds to go in the first half. They're going for it. Buckle your chin strap, brother. <laughs> Empty formation. Hill in motion. Fitzgerald keeps it. He got in. No. No signal. Touchdown. Now they give it to him. Boy, Nick Fitzgerald put his hat down, Dusty. You mentioned it. That's big boy football. Well, you knew it had to go to him, right? I mean, Nick Fitzgerald, six foot five, 240, 235 pounds, right at the line, of, right at the goal line. Big hit by Jeremiah Denson. I'm sure they're going to take another look at this. Hmm. Thomas and Denson, the safeties. It, it's really close. Uh, is there a definitive look? Let's see. It's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. Wow. I mean, it's the officials took their time in 
signaling touchdown. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Auburn has a little bit of an argument there. To me, that's one of those that whatever's called on the field, they're going to stay with it because there wasn't a conclusive look to give them a definitive resolution. Right. So the fact that it was called a touchdown on the field, I think the play stands. You didn't see that the call was confirmed. It just stood. The extra point to come. That was Fitzgerald, his sixth rushing touchdown of the season and the 39th of his career. Every inch, every foot, every yard hard earned in this game. And that's the end of the first half of play with the Bulldogs leading 13 to 3. They've won two of the last three against the Auburn Tigers here at Davis Wade Stadium with the cowbells echoing through the night. From Starkville, Mississippi. A glow at night. A look at the downtown area. 13 to 3, the home team leading by 10. A moment ago, Molly caught up with Coach Gus Malzahn of the Tigers. Coach, what did you think about that touchdown on fourth and inches? Yeah, they called a touchdown, you know. That, we got we got to we got to what figure out a way to get it going offense. Our defense is playing pretty good. Um, you know, we turned the football over there and they had an inadvertent whistle. That was a tough one. But um, we'll come out in the second half ready to go. All right, thank you, coach. Thank you. Mark Jones alongside Dusty Dvorak. Molly, you saw her a minute ago. Interesting first half. A, a low scoring first half, 13 3. No surprise. Yeah, we kind of called it with all the great defensive talent, especially on the line of scrimmage. Auburn not doing a great job on third down conversions. The muff punt set up the Mississippi State touchdown. And Nick Fitzgerald, really the story of the game, 84 rushing yards as he continues to close in on eclipsing Tim Tebow's conference record as the most prolific runner in conference history at quarterback. They're ready to go. Bulldogs will have the ball to start the third quarter. Fitzgerald pulls it out. Completes the pass to the tight end. Justin Johnson gets about seven on the play. Same play we saw earlier. A little split zone action. They bring the H back out in the flats. Easy play. Moving the pocket for Nick Fitzgerald. Easy pass. Get his confidence going here to start the second half. Hill gets it into the boundary. Some determined running, some spirited running. Picks up a first down at the 38, picked up seven. He really utilized his speed on the perimeter today. Much more perimeter runs than what we typically see from Mississippi State. They run it again, Hill around the left side, stays on his feet. Picked up about nine on the play. You hear it all the time. This is a line of scrimmage league and a lot of talent up front on both sides. But Mississippi State with the edge right now, Dusty. I was going to say this is one of those turning into a roll up your sleeves, ground and pound type of game for Joe Moore in this Mississippi State offense. Second down and one on the nine yard game. Mitchell split wide to the bottom of your screen, number 87. Fitzgerald kept it. Boy, there was a lot of looking around there, Dusty, and I'm not sure if that was indecision or not. Russell making the tackle. No gain on the play. Third down coming up. We've talked so much about Derrick Brown. Dontavious Russell making his 43rd start at defensive tackle in the SEC. Played a lot of football. You want to talk about a defense alignment that can eat up double teams and get off of blocks. Dontavious Russell. Third and one. Russell started as a retro freshman several years ago. Gerald pulled it out, stays on his feet. 
And it's brought down right at field goal range for Mississippi State on the five yard gain and a first down Bulldogs. It's a quality read. We're gonna take a look here. Marlon Davidson's gonna come off the edge. See the mesh point? He goes with the running back. Outstanding job by Nick Fitzgerald to make the proper read and pick up enough to move the chains. That's what you get with a 50-year senior. That's right. And you heard Joe Moorhead say decisive decisions in the run game. Another example there. They are sticking to their game plan. Hill got a hit of steam and got another first down at the 22-yard line. Great block out in front by Justin Johnson. 15-yard pickup, and they move the sticks again. Meanwhile, Dean still on the bench, starting cornerback for the Tigers. Offensive line blocking with physicality. The H-backs, Justin Johnson there getting out in front. Everybody upping their level of physicality in this game for Mississippi State. That's Keith Mitchell. It's Gerald. It's his tight end, Johnson. Justin Johnson chopped down nicely at the 20 yard line, picked up three. Meanwhile, Mixon was shaken up a moment ago, and he is now being taken into the locker room. Keith Mixon, a 5'8 junior out of Birmingham. Came into the game as a receiver that they look for. It caught over 100 yards worth of passes. Second down and seven. It's Gerald steps back and takes off. Man, he really moves the pile, Dusty. He is not a small guy. 6'5", 230. Now that's now his 17th 100-yard rushing game of his career. Talk about ball control. When you've got a big physical running quarterback like that, you can possess the football. You can grind the clock away. Mississippi State on the ground tonight has completely controlled this football game. Ties the school record by Anthony Dixon. Third and two. End of the game, holding 12 school records. They're going to be faced with a fourth and about two to go. And after a very impressive drive, you got to think they kicked the field goal here, right, Dusty? Absolutely. He has an impressive opening drive here. Chew up a lot of clock, move the football, continue to run with a lot of success. you got to take your points at this moment in time. Derek Brown there on the stop, already making a couple of plays here to start yeah. this second half. Chrisman in for the field goal. Made two tonight from 25 and 47. This one coming from 32. And Jace Chrisman bangs it through. The Bulldogs leading 16 to 3. An impressive opening drive. Using up a lot of clock to start the second half. Trying to upset the number eight team in the nation. When we come back to Starkville. Oh man, Mississippi Entomological Museum is on campus and boasts one of the third largest collections of insects in the southeastern United States. Over one million specimens, Dusty. If I find one of those in my hotel room, I'm running <laughs> on the exterminator, man. I think there might have been one in, in Molly's rental car. <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the back seat. Do you see the size of some of those spiders? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Tell you what, Auburn. It's a little bit of work here to do. It's an important drive. They did absolutely nothing in the first half. 79 total yards. I think they need to open up Jared Stidham and let him throw the football down the field a little bit. Little play fake. Looks down the sidelines. Caught! And out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Ryan Davis. As you just noted, Dusty, they open up the offense a little bit and take a shot complete. And this is the guy they trust the most in this offense. Ryan Davis, you know, typically they, they get him in the short passing game, intermediate throws, but they run him on a goal ball down the sidelines, perfectly placed pass by Jared Stidham. 42 yards. And this is Booby Whitlow with a nice run, picked up 13. Down to the 20-yard line. 
And in two plays, Auburn knocking at the door. Going fast. Whitlow again, this time with nowhere to go. Those guys up front, Jeffrey Simmons, one of the excellent leaders of that defensive unit. A real boss in the weight room for the Bulldogs, making the initial stop. Strong, strong at the point of attack. Sheds blocks, gets off, and disruptive. Nice job inside, shutting down the inside zone from Whitlow. Second and ten. Whitlow into the end zone and overthrows his intended receiver, Darius Slate. So third and ten coming up for Auburn. Time for the Cowbells. Time for Bob Shoup to get creative. He said in these situations, they bring in a rush package. Chauncey River's going to come in the game. Willie Gay's going to come into the game. And he told us in these situations, look for them to dial it up and bring heat on Jared Stidham. Here comes the pressure. He barely got it off in time. Almost intercepted. Intended for Slayton. Man. I mean, everybody was coming on that one, Dusty. Well, he told us they, he let some of the players draw up some of these blitzes. They're just going to bring guys, and they're going to get home. Right up the middle is where the real pressure is going to come from. And the call wasn't too bad, right? They called the wide receiver screen, but it's an outstanding play by Cameron Dantzler to be aggressive, to attack, and to make a play on the football. Carlson now going to attempt this one from 38 yards out. One for two today, made one from 47. And silences the crowd here at Davis Wade Stadium with his second field goal of the night. A little bit of a win for that defense of the Bulldogs. As they inch a little bit closer. Oh, a tight game here. We're not bucking out, but that might make you want to. <laughs> Starkville and a very good showing so far for Mississippi State's offensive line. They're telling themselves we're winning that battle at the line. Keep pounding them. It looks like number five, which is Derek Brown, is slowing down out there. We need to take advantage. Mark, Dusty. What do you make of that, Dusty? I mean, I think that's exactly the mindset as an offensive line you want to have. Continue to impose our will. Wear them down, wear them down, make them quit. Nick Fitzgerald to get the ball first and ten. From the 25 yard line. Been doing it with his legs, 102 yards. A little over 40 yards away from eclipsing Tim Tebow's quarterback conference record for rushing. Great move by Hill. Went airborne a couple of times. As he... Second down and six. Fitzgerald pulls it out and runs with it. Got about two. It'll be a third down. And four coming up. A third and four. Incomplete. Intended for Jesse Jackson. And Auburn's defense comes up with a nice sequence there. Forcing the punt. Yeah, pass thrown behind his intended target, Jesse Jackson, who's put into the starting lineup, their senior veteran receiver. Good tight coverage down the field and a poor throw. Off target for Nick Fitzgerald. Not happy about that sequence. Auburn down by two scores. Ryan Davis, number 23 right there. Back for the punt at his own 30. Tucker Day with a nice high spiral. A fair catch called at the 30-yard line. A 39-yard punt. Center gets over the ball. they got to shut down the cowbells. <laughs> Etiquette. Third and super long. This is where you see him drop back into coverage and might, might just rush for it. Nope. Little pressure coming. Sweat. They set up the screen nicely for the tight end. Schenker, and he picked up the first down. What a call, Dusty. It's a great call, and that's why I kind of thought Bob Shoup would sit back and play coverage, expecting screen something to throw you off. If you've got a team dialing it up, blitzing, come with their hair on fire, what do you do? You screen, you draw. Outstanding call and better execution for the Auburn offense. 26 yards on the pickup by Schenker. Here's Davis. 
tiptoeing up the sidelines. Let's see where they spot this. About a 70 yard gain for Ryan Davis. Second down coming up. Eight yard gain. We haven't seen much of Anthony Schwartz for Auburn, who had a touchdown last week. Hit him off the play fake. Completes the pass at the 44 yard line to Miller. And he's hit and brought down immediately. Third down coming up. Willie Gay making the tackle. Solid open field tackle by Willie Gay. Nothing down the field for Jared Stidham. He's got to go to his check down. Third to short situation. I'd be surprised if we don't see this go to Whitlow. Could be a screen up top, too. Let's see if Simmons or Sweat factor in on this play defensively for Mississippi State. Handed off to Whitlow. Great player, still on his feet. Booby spinning. The ball comes loose. Bulldogs recover. And it looks like a touchback. Or is it a touchdown? We're going to take another look at this. My question is, did he cross the plane before the ball came out? Obviously, they're saying no. Ball came out first. Whitlock. Oh. I thought he was in the end zone from that angle. He grabs the ball. He tries to stretch it over the goal line. The ruling on the field is that the runner fumbled the ball prior to crossing the goal line. The defense recovered the ball in the end zone, resulting in a touchback. I think it's going to be a touchdown. I think that's going to be a touchdown. I mean, to me, it looks like he's possessing the football as he's taking it forward. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown, touchback, to the state. Wow. So Gus Malzahn's team comes that close to making it a field goal game, but instead, everybody checking the replay on their ESPN app. <laughs> when we saw it live, I thought that he crossed the goal line and it was going to wind up being a touchdown, but as we slowed it down, excellent job by our camera crew once again getting a great look at that. So it's first and 10 from the 20 yard line, uh, disconsolate and dejected Ruby Whitlow. It's a game of inches, right? Exactly. I mean, think about, think about those two game-changing plays to close out the half and right there at the goal line. Under two minutes to go in the third. It's Darrell keeps it. Still on his feet, got a good block on the edge and uses wonderful discretion stepping out of bounds as he gets closer to Tim Tebow's quarterback rushing record for SEC QBs. His reads have been so spot on tonight. Defensive end wants to take the running back. He says, no problem. I'll tuck it up and get a nice pickup. So he's closer and closer. 22 yards away from eclipsing Tim Tebow. I think I saw I had his number put into the, uh, the Raptors there. Nice win by them today against LSU. Yeah. Peter's winning at home. Allen Hill tiptoeing through tacklers. Picks up 11 as we get under a minute to go at midfield. There's Williams on the fake, and Fitzgerald keeps it. Got four. Atkinson making the tackle. This is going to be the last play at the quarter, quarter. And as we go into the fourth quarter, these first three quarters have been tough. They've been physical. And Mississippi State has owned the ground game. The end of the third quarter. You've got to imagine that's only going to continue. And as these plays and this time continue to accumulate, Auburn's going to wear down, get tired, really playing in the hands of Mississippi State Bulldogs. Welcome, everyone, to Stark Vegas. What happens in Stark Vegas stays in Stark Vegas on a Saturday night in the SEC. 
And welcome back, everyone, under the lights. ESPN College Football Primetime for the start of the fourth quarter at Davis Wade Stadium. Everyone turning on their phone lights and lighting up the night. The home team leading as we enter the final 15. Mark Jones, Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath down to the field. Mississippi 15 minutes away from upsetting the number eight team in the nation. Hill and Auburn's defense strung it out nicely. Limiting the game to a yard. Igbenogany. Nice job on the perimeter by Igbenogany. You know, they've gotten so many of these perimeter runs, been able to get to the edge, and the cornerback there keeps contained, forces the running back out of bounds. Nice job to set up the third and long. See if Kevin Steele dials up any pressure to try to come after Nick Fitzgerald. He's got three receivers out to his left. Rolls and delivers complete. It's going to take a couple of moves. Thomas, it's going to be close. Not sure that he got there. Dedrick Thomas, it is sixth reception of the season. And they're going to mark it. Just a little bit short of that first down line that we have down there on the field. Do you even think about going for it here, Dusty? Or what's the thought process for Moorhead? Ooh, man, this is a tough spot <laughs> right here. I think he's going to go for it, though. It's kind of been the MO of them so far tonight. We've got a big 235 pound quarterback. I was going to say, I'd be surprised if this goes anywhere but Nick Fitzgerald. You could always think this could be a hard count. Try to draw him off sides. The one for one on fourth downs tonight. Fitzgerald keeps it. He's not going to get there. There was a surge in the middle led by Brown and Russell and the Tigers with one of the definitive tipping points of the ball game. Deshaun Davis also there. So they'll take over on downs. The interior of that Auburn front seven outstanding on this play penetration completely stoned them at the line of scrimmage take a look at these two guys right here okay coming here coming here we're gonna get penetration up front see Deshaun Davis working through Calhoun just continuing to fight stacking up Nick Fitzgerald nowhere for him to run huge stop for Kevin Steele and his defense as they stone Nick Fitzgerald for the first time tonight the takeover on downs the Tigers do Stidham gets rid of it quickly Davis on the edge and brought down with a high tackle right there at the 45-yard line. A gain of three. Who else but Jonathan Abram? A headhunter, a hard hitter out there. And this guy comes downhill with bad intentions right now. Actually almost overruns the play, but he grabs him with the left arm and gets him to the turf. Hit him with plenty of time. Into the boundary, Davis makes the reception for the first down. Most people go ready, aim, fire. <laughs> he's ready, fire, aim. He's a, he's a throwback. He's the type of guy you want in your football team, that's for sure, Jonesy. Second and eight. Stidham in the middle of the field. Almost intercepted by the guy you were just talking about, Abram. And that's one that he wants back. Montez Sweat, he started to make his presence felt in this second half. Working on Calvin Ashley, coming off the edge right here. Just a speed rush. We've seen him several times now. And a work outside, then he comes back underneath when he gets to the level, puts a big hit oh. on Jared Stidham as Jonathan Abram almost comes up with a huge interception. Third and long, Stidham to Davis. Little tunnel screen, a first down and a lot more. Davis literally dragged by his teammate, kept up right. Looked like it was Harrell that lifted him up for a few more yards. Let's see this replay, a gain of 22, Dusty. Love this play call. It's gonna be a wide receiver screen. Watch all these guys get out here and set it up. And are able to give Ryan Davis exactly what he needs and the tunnel screen for a big first down. On the handoff, this is Schwartz, the speedster, on his first touch of the ball game, on that jet sweep action they like to use. The freshman from Miami makes it first and goal on the 17-yard pickup. He's got some speed, and doesn't he? 10.07 in the 100 meters. Stidham 
keeps it wide open dropped it Slayton couldn't hang on and get that foot down he was so focused on getting his foot in bounds think he quit tracking the football wow well very well executed play up until the drop RPO wide open in the back of the end zone I actually think he had that with one hand that Cameron Danzler came in and knocked it loose there at the last oh, yeah. second he nice play have. by Cameron Danzler they learned the backfield on second and goal Stidham no shot that time incomplete for Canella and it'll be third and goal are we looking at four down territory at this point of the game? Uh, not yet. No, 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 no. no. Field goal gets it to a one score game. Absolutely okay. not. You got to get your points here. Jonathan Abram, though, excellent job running with the wide receiver. Sal Canella in the back line of the end zone. That's exactly where Jared Stidham wanted to go. Jonathan Abram wasn't having it. Third and goal. Hit him incomplete at the one intended for Slayton went right back to him and the Bulldogs defense wins as the field goal unit comes in Cameron Danzler's playing a heck of a ball game tonight cornerback for Mississippi State long athletic very skilled corner he's been an extra hat in the run fits and nice tight coverage throughout this evening this Mississippi State defense. Yeah, Terrell Buckley, former Miami Dolphin, doing a great job with those DBs. In comes Carlson. This one coming from 24 yards out. And he knocks it through to make it a one score game. A low scoring game. Sometimes it helps when you get a little help from your friends when they literally lift you up. <laughs> Back after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Davis Wade Stadium. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Number eight, Auburn, trailing unranked Mississippi State in their road conference opener. Each team with three field goals apiece tonight. Can they put it away? Deshaun Davis back on the field for the Tigers after being shaken up a couple series ago. Allen Hill on the loose. First down out to the 48 yard line. Tackled by Davis downfield. A 17 yard gain. Auburn with all three timeouts remaining. Excellent vision and patience in the hole by Kylan Hill. Watch the jump cut. The vision. Whoop. Over here, he sees it, he gets to it. Excellent speed in the open field. Kylan Hill. Running much more like the guy we saw in week two right. than the one we saw the last couple of weeks on the tape. Yeah, we had him against Kansas State. He went for over 200 yards that afternoon. Over 100 here tonight under the lights. And the meter still running for Kylan Hill. Picked up about seven or eight. Second and one for Mississippi State. Mississippi State in no hurry whatsoever. Wear that clock down as much as they can. Gerald gives it to Hill again. This time brought down behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose about two yards. Clock running with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Mississippi State has won two of the last three games against Auburn here in Starkville, Mississippi. And Joe Moorhead looking for his first conference win here at home. Former head coach at Fordham, offensive coordinator at Penn State. After two consecutive losses, got encouraging texts and phone calls from his former buddy James Franklin at Penn State, J.D. Burkhardt, a couple of colleagues of his. Third down and three. To keep the drive alive, Fitzgerald doing it himself. Took the hit from Denson and got two more after the contact. That's the luxury of having a six foot five, 230 plus pound physical quarterback. He gets hit right at the line to gain, but watch him fall forward, the leg drive. 
leaning forward, fighting for those extra yards. Four minutes to go. Gonna run the play clock down as much as they can here. And back to Eris Williams on the fringes of field goal range. Should they elect to kick one or should they have to? A six yard pickup by last year's 1,000 yard rusher, Eris Williams. Eris Williams, a different kind of runner than Kylan Hill, but they're great compliments to each other. Eris Williams, more of a one cut downhill type of player. You saw the slight hesitation that he gets downhill right now, whereas Kylan Hill uses that speed and he's shifty and he runs in the open field. Mississippi State has run for. Well over 300 yards, 323. On second and long, Hill going to try and stay in bounds, but he is unable to. Jensen pushes him out. 2.44 to go, and they move the chains. Again. Pardon me. Yeah, they, well, third and one. Close. Speaking of eating, Kylan Hill, mm -hmm. Nick Fitzgerald, they've been eating tonight. 50 of the 55 carries have been Kylan Hill, Nick Fitzgerald this Mississippi State rushing attack. If they hang on, we know who's splitting the game ball tonight. I don't know, when you break an SEC all-time record for most rushing yards, yeah. I think maybe you get yeah. that by yourself. Yeah. Good call. Seven on the play clock. Thomas in motion, Fitzgerald keeps it. A fitting end to the night. Nick, quick, touchdown, 21 yards. Well, that's the exclamation point for Nick Fitzgerald and for Mississippi State. Backs were against the wall. They had to have a win, and they told us we got to get back to playing physical, being able to run the football. They've done that and some here tonight, partner. Mitch Fitzgerald came out motivated tonight. And this goes back to the consecutive losses. He wasn't going to let his team down. That's what he told us when he looked us in the eye yesterday during our meetings with him. Well, let's take a look at a play that's been so successful tonight for this offense, okay? We're going to pull the guard. We're going to get Kylan Hill out in front. It's going to be a simple quarterback counter, block it up. And Nick Fitzgerald sees the hole, breaks one tackle, and it's off to the races. Physical blocking all night. Nick Fitzgerald is going to get talked about as well he should, but this offensive line, Elton Jenkins, Deion Calhoun, Greg Island, Stuart Reese, these guys had quite the challenge against this big, bad Auburn front seven, and they brought physicality from the moment go tonight, and it's been all throughout this entire game. Outstanding job on the ground tonight for this Mississippi State offense. And the Bulldogs are sky high right now. Fun here tonight, oh, well, man. Hey, I'm about ready to do my little rip too, my little shoot dance. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a flag. It'll come out to the 35-yard line. And finally, a smile. His counterpart stood him incomplete at midfield. You know, it was interesting. Last week was a real emotional game for this Mississippi yeah. State team facing their former coach, Dan Mullen. And I'd ask Nick Fitzgerald, do you have to be careful about not letting Florida beat you twice? Was there any carryover? And he looked us in the eye and said, no, we're ready to play. And he was right. Pass complete to Slayton. 
Still on the move and pushed out of bounds at the 29. I think for a lot of these players, just getting past that aspect, you know what I'm saying, Jonesy? Just getting past that whole mental aspect of playing against your former coach. It's freed them up. It's allowed them to come out here. And let's face it, when you've lost two straight games in the SEC, your back's against the wall, and you are starving for a win. We saw a big response from this football team this evening. They played with a lot of urgency. And for the coach. Yeah. We saw it on the coach's face. He needed this yeah. win for himself and this program, too. It's Gerald breaking Tebow's rushing record for quarterbacks in the conference. Complete underneath to Canella again. As we approach one minute to go. Auburn, the number eight team in the country. So this makes things a little bit more interesting in the SEC West. Of course, there's Alabama and then a bunch of jockeying behind them. Incomplete. Canella couldn't squeeze it this time. And Alabama rolling again today against Arkansas. Tua looking as good as he has all season. Frighteningly good. That team looks frighteningly good right now. <laughs> See, if you take a look at Derek Brown on the bench, frustration all over his face. Yeah. Hit him into the end zone. Incomplete. Slayton, the intended receiver. And look at Abram saying, you're not going to catch anything. I don't care if it's early, middle, or late. He's had a ball game here tonight, partner. Let's look at the standings in the SEC. Mississippi State about to get on the board here. LSU, 15, fifth-ranked team in the country, has already lost. Auburn. We got 48 seconds to go, and they're down two scores. We could have three top 10 teams go down this first Saturday in October. And Gus Malzahn's team still trying to bounce back. Sweat. You know, at some point, you got to help this guy, right? right? I mean, at some point, you got to give him a chipper. You got to put a tight end over there. Give him some help some way, somehow. Because Montez Sweat, he's putting a highlight yeah. tape together this second half. Yeah. Fourth and Columbus, Mississippi to go. And a blitz coming. Stidham eluding harm's way and incomplete. He ducked for his life and fired incomplete for Slayton. That'll do it. And we can start writing the obituary on this game. The upset nearly complete. Big win for Joe Morant, as we mentioned. His first SEC victory. And, you know, I think he had to kind of build himself up, give himself confidence, remind himself that he's a heck of a football coach. And his principles, his concepts, they do work. His offensive line, his team, they stepped up and they showed out. And they matched a physical defensive front with big-time physicality in the run game here tonight. Well, he told us that his offense was a little bit like Chipotle. Not a ton of ingredients, just a bunch of different mixes and matches but the recipe was all good tonight for coach moorhead and mississippi state as they win it 23 to 9 and snap their two-game losing streak coach earning his first conference victory auburn the third top 10 team to fall today it was that type of saturday in college football. But that's the appetizer for October. Yes, sir. Man, I can't wait for the, <laughs> the full course. Let's go downstairs to Molly. <laughs> Nick's just going over what he ate for breakfast because he just had one heck of a day. Nick, people doubted your offense. You just beat the number eight team in the country. What does this do for your season? Uh, you know, it's huge. It's huge. Uh, for the past two weeks, we've really struggled uh, offensively, defensively. You know, they played great. We just haven't had their back. Uh, you know, it kind of took to today to kind of get it clicking again and get it going. 
Uh, running the ball. Running the ball. You know, we did a great job. Offensive line dominated the whole game. Uh, you know, couldn't ask for a better better job by them. Uh, you know, we kind of we, we had we had our way at the offensive line, and that's really kind of what gave us the today. You are the SEC's all-time leading rusher at the quarterback position. You're smiling when you hear that. It's a really tough league to do something like that. What does that mean to you? Uh, it's huge. It's huge. Uh, you know, a guy that uh, a lot of people didn't think should even be in the SEC coming out of high school. Uh, you know, worked my butt off, got the starting job. Uh, you know, bad through a lot of adversity. And you know, I have to give it all to my offensive line, though, honestly. You know, without them, I'm not running anywhere. So, uh, you know, it's huge accomplishment for me, but you know, it's a huge compliment to them. You are physical and decisive in the run game. You took a lot of hits tonight. What was your mentality going up against their defensive front? Uh, keep going. Uh, it didn't matter how many times I got hit, I was going to get up and just keep going. Uh, yeah, I owe that to my, to my teammates. <laughs> I owe that to these fans, uh, to my family who supported me my whole life. Uh, so it's, it's an amazing feeling uh, going out there and beating a team like this. All right. Congratulations. Go celebrate the win. Thanks, Nick. Final score, 23 to 9. You heard the motivation for Fitzgerald. Some thought he wasn't an SEC-type quarterback. That was his motivational fuel. But Fitzgerald came through dripping tonight. Almost 200 yards on the ground, leading his team to the win. Stay tuned for Sports Center. It's coming up next for Molly McGrath, Dusty Dvorak, and our entire talented crew behind the camera you never get, get a chance to see. I'm Mark Jones. So long from Stark Vegas.